My name is Delazad Degati, son of Reza, the famous photographer. My father was often gone when I was growing up, off photographing conflicts and disasters, using his camera to fight a war against war. Exiled from his own country, Iran, he became a citizen of the world. He settled in Paris, and that's where my sister and I came in. But he was rarely home. So, when I was a young child, he made me a promise that one day, he and I would go on a trip together, just the two of us. Now we're off. We're traveling from Beijing to Paris, an adventure spanning over 16,000 kilometers. We'll explore cities and deserts, meet nomads, monks, and artists. We'll even have a few run-ins with the police. It's a great chance to discover the world and each other. It's going to be amazing. Our journey begins in China's capital city, Beijing, with a visit to the famous Forbidden City. It's crowded, chaotic, and hot. So we buy matching Mao hats to shade us from the sun. Mao Zedong was the leader of the Communist Party of China until he died in 1976. His image is everywhere in Beijing. This one, Chinese Mao, you buy this one. We thought the hats would make good souvenirs, but they also make us a lot of friends. So what are you taking picture now? Your hat is very cool. It's about 14 years ago in China. The only color is green. And now if a Chinese wear a hat like this, Maybe others will see something wrong with him. What about us? For you, it's totally different. You're so cool. <laughs> so modern. <laughs> the Forbidden City is where China's emperors used to live. And for hundreds of years, no commoners were allowed inside. That's definitely changed. We also check out another extraordinary place near Beijing, the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall was originally built for defense. Now, instead of keeping the hordes at bay, the wall is overrun by them. <laughs> of course, wearing our Mao hats, we're asked to be in a thousand pictures. <laughs> On the other side of the camera, Dad's been teaching me how to frame my images, how to steady myself to take a good shot. Dad and I head up to the highest point on the wall. It's a long climb, but it's worth it. The view is amazing. Do you see one in you? 
Bah là, là on est encore sur la muraille de Chine et c'est vachement vachement. Ah ouais c'est impressionnant la muraille de Chine. Hein. Mais par contre, mais imagine il t'avait dit. I'm glad Delazar is visiting China's well-known sites, but I want him to experience more. So I take him to meet a former student of mine, Lu Guang. Lu Guang's photos show a remote village where many people were infected with HIV while donating blood in a government-run program. I think Delazad should see this side of China and meet people like Lu Guang, who take risks to expose injustice. Beijing is exciting, but hectic. There's just so much to take in. The next day begins with a start. We've overslept and are late for the train. I pray that we'll get to the station on time. But Dad thinks we'll miss it. We, we will arrive in 45 minutes there, and uh, it is late for this train. We need another train. Okay? Parlons à Dieu, nous nous lamentons. Non, non, non. Lamentons pas sur le sur notre pessimisme. Pas pessimiste. Si tu es pessimiste, et peut-être réaliste, mais tu es quand même pessimiste. Bah là, tu ne montres pas ton optimisme. Il faut que tu sois plus optimiste. Tu vois combien je rigole malgré toutes les difficultés et problèmes. Je continue à rigoler. On this trip, I am realizing how different Dad and I are. But that doesn't stop us from talking about important things. For the first time, Dad tells me about my grandmother's death. L'hôpital est moins appelé. I never got to meet my grandmother or many of my relatives in Iran. Dad had to leave there before I was even born, but I hope I will get to visit one day. We get to the station to find our train to Xi'an has been delayed. I think my prayer has been answered. While waiting for the train, we meet up with Lu Jia, who will be our assistant and translator. You can use this one. Chopstick. You can use chopstick. I'm happy to see Delazad adapting. Beijing was a shock to him, a totally different universe. I hope with all the new experiences on this journey, 
that maybe Azar will begin to question what he believes about himself. This old train doesn't have electrical outlets to charge our equipment. On the road, I want to stay updated on soccer scores, TV shows, and emails. But more importantly, the trip's not all planned out yet, and Dad's charged me with booking the rest of our itinerary. So it's important that I stay connected and charged up. On arrive dans 11 heures. Normalement, si s'il n'y a pas d'accident. Non, je plaisante. Voilà. Non, enfin, tu plaisantes, mais c'est ce que tout le monde dit. Hein. Ah bon C'est comme Inch'Allah ici. Baba, Baba, il dit que leur Inch'Allah ici, c'est de dire que que ok, sauf s'il y a des accidents. Voilà. The station is packed. We push our way through looking for a taxi. Suddenly we see a sign above the crowd. A family friend has sent one of his students to save us. A nice end to a long day. She unsurprises me. I thought it was a small country town, but it's full of high rises and shopping centers. Dad and I go searching for some local artists. We visit the store of a man who sculpts characters out of tree roots. And another who collects unusual rocks. As always, Dad has his eye out for a photogenic face. <laughs> the aroma of tea grabs our attention. Yes, yes, I know. They give you a little to taste. Dad is something of a tea expert. He drinks it all the time. What is the, the most expensive tea that they have? They tell us it's a thousand US dollars a pound. Thousands for half a kilo? What is this? I do not understand why it's so expensive. Picked up by hand and made by hand, all by hand. <laughs> I end up drinking 14 bowls of tea in a row. I feel drunk on tea. <laughs> Fueled by all that tea, we climb the steps of the 600-year-old wall to look out over the city. Shen was at one end of the fabled circle which ran across Asia and Middle East, all the way to the Mediterranean. Having Lu Jia with us is great because we can talk to people. I, I love the baby. We 
wander into a small merchant's quarter where we find calligraphy, paintings of Xi'an, and shadow puppets. I love music, no matter what kind. So I've been checking out popular Chinese musicians. I try to talk with Chinese kids here about Jay, the Taiwanese singer so famous across China. I ask them, is Taiwan a part of China or not? I'm really surprised when they don't want to talk about it. Back in France, no one hesitates to tell you exactly what they think. For dinner, Dad, Lu Jia, and I wander into a small street full of people and the incredible smells of food. The next day, we go to see the Terracotta Warriors. Over 7,000 life-sized figures were buried here with the first emperor to unify China. He died in 210 BC. At the museum, Dad and I debate about hiring a guide. I say no. I want to finish early to play basketball with some new friends. But Dad insists. I'm not happy. But once we're inside, I realize my dad may have been right. Our guide explains some interesting things, like how each statue depicts an individual with its own unique hairstyle and facial expression. The warriors were originally hand-painted. A lot of this site still needs to be explored. The emperor's tomb itself has yet to be excavated. Learning about the first emperor makes me think about China's current political leader. Mais tout 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 le monde il aime bien Hu Jintao ici. Ouais ouais non mais attends tu parles. Mais si hein, à chaque fois que je leur demande ils me disent ils aiment bien. Mais ils sont obligés. Ils sont obligés c'est pas comme la France où tu peux dire ce que tu veux contre eux ça recousit les autres. Ah ça si tu dis un truc ça te traverse sur Hu Jintao tu vas en tonne. En tonne mais tu je vais mal vu. I have 
devoted my life to fighting against injustice by bearing witness and giving voice to those who have none. Because I believe that injustice endures when there is no free press, I set up a center in Afghanistan to train women to be journalists and to educate children. Now, their voices can join in the fight for justice. Ça c'est deux symboles. Che, Maru, les paysans qui ont fait la révolution en 1983. I also want to change the world. That's why I want to go into politics. That's where real power exists. I read in one of our guidebooks that every moment roughly 10 million people are traveling on a train in China. Azad hates the crowds. But now we are heading away from the cities into the heart of China. Dad tells me an old Iranian saying, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. This trip is something I used to dream about. But this is just the beginning. We haven't even been arrested yet. So far on this journey, we've walked together along the Great Wall of China and through Beijing's crowded streets. Now, we've arrived in China's Wild West. Today's adventure is to visit this Buddhist monastery on my own. I find a guide to show me around. And how many years you It feels good to be independent. We can see some special buildings. 2000 and 2005 hand. The monastery is over 400 years old. It's where the yellow hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism began, the same sect the Dalai Lama belongs to. Beautiful. <laughs> In one of the temples, the guide explains the meaning of the different prayer flags. Different color always have a different meanings. This is a special gift offering to the Buddha, sacrifice to the Buddha. I notice an elderly monk sitting outside. And I join him. Hello. Hey, 
is my 89 years old. 89. Yeah, and when he was six, he came to this temple. Six to 89. <clears throat> he tells Liu Jia that his family lives in Tibet and that when he was younger, he painted religious texts. He is cared for here with the other older monks. <laughs> I admire his devotion. Faith is the center of my life, but there's so much I'm still learning. You do them free every day. I won't, but I don't know the Muslim prayer at hell. I'm, I'm learning. We meet back up with Dad and take a taxi to the city market. So this is what you did today? Yeah, I saw you were playing. Yeah. Very good. And you, you play for Buddha? Mm -hmm. And you, this was all your family doing or you doing your own No, not all of my family members do this. My grandma, uh, the name is Buddha. When I'm in the church, I do the prayer because it's the same. I think it's the same God, but for all people have a different face. Uh -huh. Qining is a city of many faiths. Lots of Hui people live here. Muslims whose ancestors came from Middle Asia, Arabia, and even Persia, just like Dad. He was raised Muslim in Iran, and I grew up in Paris among a mix of religious traditions. So in some ways, we feel at home here. We buy local Hui hats that will let us blend in. We wander the market for several hours and grab some lunch. Dad wants to visit an old mosque that he first saw 12 years ago. It has a new facade, but we find it. We want to join the prayers here. First, we do the ritual washing. I'm still learning the exact way it's done. Je me méfie toujours de visite des officiels des temples, des églises, des synagogues. Il y a toujours un. Il se jamais pour pour spiritualité. C'est toujours pour avoir des effets politiques qui font ça. Les politiciens et la religion, ils utilisent toujours la religion. I want to be a politician. I think I could do a lot of good on a big scale. But I'm also very religious. I don't ever want to give up one thing for the other. After evening prayers, we go for dinner back at the market. Some of the food looks exciting, but Dad plays it safe. It's been a long day, so we make it an early night. The next morning, we drive along the edge of the Tibetan Plateau. This area is among the most remote and poorest areas of China. My dad is eager to see what happened since he was last here over 10 years ago. This large family of Tibetan nomads is earning money by posing for tourists in the rapeseed fields. Hello. They move. They move. Yeah. 
tout ça, c'est euh, une attraction du tourisme seulement, des Tibétains. Le peuple. Ça casse toute une génération dans les touristes. Dad says the government is encouraging Han people to migrate here. Ethnic minorities, like the Tibetans, are worried about being overwhelmed by the Han culture. We head towards a Tibetan temple Dad notices from the road, and we see a woman circling the Buddha, praying for good health. <laughs> I love this old grandmother. I don't speak Tibetan or Chinese. This woman doesn't speak English. But we say many things to each other in this spiritual place. I think God is perhaps the silent link between people. Farther down the road, we find a place where Tibetans come to let the winds carry their prayers. Tout ça c'est des drapeaux, mais il y a aussi des prières écrites non dessus. Bien sûr. Ah? Les gens ils amènent ils mettent ça. Oui, qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Le Dalai Lama, l'un de ses rêves, c'est de venir en Tibet. Bah oui, évidemment. Il peut pas y aller parce que les Chinois. Je comprends. Eh mais s'il arrive, il vient clandestinement, il va lui arriver quoi bah, Ils vont l'arrêter, certainement. Mais en prison. Ou... I can't imagine what it's like to be exiled for either the Dalai Lama or my dad. But I hope that one day they can both go home. J'ai vu ça à Vincennes. We head back to have some yak butter tea. But not before I get to know the yak a little better. La peur est partie. Reste un peu, reste un peu. A few kilometers farther down the road, we come across another nomad homestead. C'est un nomade tibétain. On va essayer de voir si on peut rapprocher. Ah, des mots, des mots. Ah, ah c'est de yogourt. Chaud. Bien ou. Euh... <rire> Dad sees a little boy from the road and wants to stop for a picture. He seems happy to have someone to play with. 
I like visiting these big, open places where I can finally hear myself think. The next leg of our journey is the night train to Tulufan. Sorry, we're too late. Go, 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 go here, please. What luck! Somehow Dad and Liu Jia get us tickets for the last sleeper car. We have a surprise for Dad this evening. Okay. <laughs> I'm so tired. This is my birthday dinner. Yes. Have rice. Without vegetables. Without vegetables. No vegetables. Thank you very much. This is too fun. It is too fun. It is too fun. Yes. We better go down. A new town means it's time for a new hat. This one is traditional among the Uyghur. They are one of the oldest Turkic-speaking groups in Central Asia. And like the Hui, they are mainly Muslim. We head out to the hills and on the way are stopped by the police who want to see our papers. But dad speaks to them in Uyghur, so they end up telling him how to get around the checkpoints. It's cool to see him in action. It's beautiful and warm in the desert. Dad says this area was just beyond the border of the Persian Empire 2,500 years ago. But you can still see its influence. Toute cette vallée là, qui est partout, partout, plein de raisins, au fond, ils utilisent ce bâtiment qui est unique dans le monde pour sécher les raisins. Before he became a photographer, Dad studied architecture, so it's no surprise he's fascinated by the mud buildings and the car as wells. Just ici là, c'est l'entrée de Cariz. Tu vois? C'est l'entrée de Cariz et c'est le système d'irrigation, un des plus anciens systèmes d'irrigation en Iran. Tout est irrigué comme ça dans le désert. Et le montagne que tu vas au fond là-bas? C'est le Tian Shan Mountain, le, le, le montagne céleste. C'est de là où euh, ils emmènent l'eau jusqu'à ici, mm -hmm. souterrain, en creusant des centaines de puits, des centaines et des centaines, et après un canal en bas qui, qui emmène l'eau. We're invited to a local house for lunch. They're making lagman, the traditional Uyghur dish, with chopped lamb, onions, and tomatoes. 
it's served over these incredible noodles. Dad remembers this dish from long ago and can't wait to taste it again. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. very good. Just look at this. This trip has been great so far. It makes me want to take another journey with Dad. Just head up on the No. Mm. I I don't understand why Dad is being so cautious. I think we'd be fine. I don't trust this religious regime. I don't know that I could keep Tel Azad safe there. To take Azad's mind from Iran, I take him to visit a great Uyghur musician, Abdul Rahman Ibrahim. The music is beautiful. It's funny, he's singing a song about Janan, which is my sister's name. It's nice to be reminded of home. It turns out music isn't even his job. Carpentry is. I'm so glad my father kept his promise to me. Life on the road, though, isn't always easy with him. Don't strangle me. She's killing me. Dad keeps saying that for security reasons, we might be stopped by police or even arrested. But I don't care. It might be a good experience. <laughs> the police seem to be very interested in us with all our cameras and gear. We go straight to my friend, the artist Ghazi Ahmad. I met him years ago when I was in China. His paintings record Uyghur history, helping to keep this culture alive. Uh, 
böyle dünya görgüsü seyahate götüreceğim beraber. Şimdi o lafsime lafsime vefa edelim. Ona bir zat yazar. Gazi paints a calligraphy for me that reads, "Knowledge is the highest human achievement." I want to make my own mark on the world, to make it a better place. This is the promise I've made to Dad. And like Dad, I always keep my promises. We've been on the road for three weeks and are now in northwestern China, heading towards the homeland of Genghis Khan. We've come to witness a rare solar eclipse. And those policemen? Well, they're here to watch us. We were on our way out of Hami when we hit a roadblock. The police stopped us and some other foreigners and took us all back to their station. We were stuck waiting for hours. So I played basketball with a couple of Americans. But dad just sat in a corner, head in hands. I have often been detained by police because of my work. But this time, my son is here. And that's a whole new worry for me. I want to protect him, but I also want him to confront life without my constant shielding. It seemed like Dad was worried for nothing. The police finally let us go, though they did come with us. So, if you look at three minutes After all the trouble to get here, when the eclipse happened, everyone was happy. Happiest of all was Dad, who waited 56 years to see an eclipse. It was a good beginning for the next leg of our adventure. We settle in for a long train ride. The landscapes repeat themselves. We relax and chat with the other passengers. This, this song is about uh, don't leave me, don't leave me. It's very famous. This is our last train ride with our assistants Liu Jia and Yang Dong. I didn't expect to be so sad to see them go, but now I realize that a link's been created between all of us.
We're headed to the airport to catch a flight to Inner Mongolia, a region of China that borders the separate country of Mongolia. But we have some trouble with the taxis. You should better have a better car, no? Go to the airport. Dad's really worried, but we do manage to get there on time. This is where we have to leave our friends. We wave goodbye until we can't see them anymore. Now, it's just Dad and me, and a whole new area to explore. When we reach Ujumachin, we will meet my friend Ayin, who has photographed the last nomadic tribes of China's Inner Mongolia for much of his life. Pido 一生都生活在草原上。按照自然规律，是指原本生态、村落的草原，一得百年、千年的永续利用。Ain and I share the same conviction that photographs can change the world. He is the perfect guide to take my son and I into the real heart of this land. On our way to the nomads in the grasslands, Ayin takes us to a Buddhist temple, one of the largest in Inner Mongolia. Outside the Beizi temple, dozens of men and women are doing Tai Chi in the courtyard. <laughs> Dad asks the Grand Master to show him some moves. I realize that he's as good at Tai Chi as I am at Kung Fu, which is pretty bad. Yeah. 
Ayin also brings us to a traditional Mongolian doctor, because dad likes to visit local healers when he travels. I would like him to take uh, to, to see and tell my condition, general condition. <laughs> After feeling dad's pulse, the doctor tells him he has gallbladder issues. And he's right. That's where dad was operated on years ago. The doctor recommends some medicines, and we watch his assistants prepare them. The doctor was a special treat for dad, but Ayin has something planned for me too. We visit a family of traditional Mongolian musicians. The instruments look as amazing as they sound. We learn how the skills of playing these instruments have been passed in this family from one generation to the next. But the son does not just copy the father. In fact, the son has just won a competition for a very modern piece he composed inspired by the movement of horses. I think of the responsibility that we have as parents to plant in our children the seeds of our values, our traditions, but also to let them grow in their own way and become the individuals they want to be. Early the next day, we arrive at a nomad camp. Ayin has been here many times before, so they welcome us in at once for breakfast. The yurt is cozy, but it's a tough place to call home. The little girl is covered in mosquito bites, 
I try to help her by giving her some lotion. Je sais pas si elle va comprendre que je veux lui donner. I also show her how to use my camera. For once on this trip, I get to be the teacher. Yeah, we got the photo. I'm so glad Ayn brought us out here. This land of open spaces is so savage, so wide, that we feel more human. Ever since we arrived in Inner Mongolia, the rhythm has been different, calmer, slower than before. We don't always gel, Delazan and I, but we are growing together learning about each other every day. After the ping pong, you will discover a new quality, a new... It's a new discovery, a new sport in which I am not. Bravo. But you see, we talked about... The Mongols here, they say everything you are very good. Yeah, you say that? Cavalier. The horse riding is great, but I can see that the nomad's life is not easy. Ayin takes us to visit a yurt that is being rebuilt after it collapsed in a storm. As usual, Dad finds the spot with the best view. It's like his eyes are instruments that measure the best angle, the best composition. Our time with Ain and nomads of Inner Mongolia is coming to an end. In the morning, we say goodbye, and I wish Ayn the best in his work. Today, we're driving through the Gobi Desert to Ulanhot. We're five people in the car, so I can't sleep. It's times like these that I miss being home. I watched Dad film the rain falling on the window. It just seems like a normal storm to me, so I'm not sure why he's filming it. Once in Ulaanbaatar, we take another overnight train to cross out of China and into Mongolia proper. Hello. Hello. 
comme ça genre euh, l'éclipse ou un passage de frontière papa il me dit alors qu'il m'a toujours dit qu'il fallait pas stresser qu'il stressait toute la journée à ce qu'on lui pique les cassettes I often wish mom and my sister Trinan could be here with us to see these spectacular places Dad has been to over 40 countries, but he's never been to Mongolia. This will be something new to experience together, like the eclipse. We check into a hotel in the capital, Ulaanbaatar, then head out into the night. There are pictures and statues of Genghis Khan all around. Dad says the communists outlawed his image because they feared a rise of nationalism. But like Mao in China, Genghis Khan is now everywhere in Mongolia. Outside of the city, we see a reenactment of Genghis Khan's army at war. He turned the scattered Mongolian tribes into a united and unstoppable force. Mongolia has been amazing. Now we're headed for a new country, Russia. We're taking a mammoth 53-hour train ride, a ride straight into trouble and into the unwelcome arms of the Russian authorities. We're heading from Mongolia to Russia. It's been great traveling with Dad so far, but I'm worried that things are about to take a turn for the worse. We don't have a translator or guide, so we face a series of long train rides with no buffer between us. But if we survive this first part of Russia, the clear waters and open skies of Lake Baikal wait for us. I passed some of the time writing. I don't want to forget what I've seen over the last month.
dad's been giving me more and more control over our travel plans, but he seems to question the decisions I make. I want Delaza to see this journey as more than a string of capitals. To get to know the culture, to reach out to people on each leg of the journey. During my travels, I keep in mind a Persian poem about how all human beings are part of one soul and one body. If one part is suffering, the whole body suffers. It is this sense of connection with others that I'm trying to convey to Azad in the course of this trip. Crossing into Russia does not go smoothly. We have our first run-in with the Russian authorities. They take our passports and search our luggage. They're harsh and treat us like we're guilty of something. Our papers are in order, so they let us continue into Siberia. Dad warns me that we may not always be so lucky. Finally, we're off the train. And what does dad want to do? Go to a market. Why? Because dad says it's a chance to connect with the locals. Dad really wants to see the Nerpa, a seal found only in the fresh water of Lake Baikal. I don't get why he likes it so much. With sightseeing behind us, we're ready to relax at the lake. After so much traveling together, Dad and I need some time apart. Dad goes to photograph the woods nearby, while I stay inside to write. Dad usually travels by himself, and I think he sometimes misses the solitude. 
I'm different. I normally like to be surrounded by lots of people. But it's nice to have an afternoon to myself today. No matter how far we go, I can count on my sister to keep me posted on our favorite show. Ah bon, donc tous ces téléphones c'était pour plus belle la vie là. Tous ces coups de fil pour ma Jana. Oui, t'inquiète pas, t'inquiète pas. Dad and I were starting to get worn out by this trip. But over these past few days, we found much needed rest and peace. I'm feeling good, ready to get back on that train. But Dad can't shake the sense that trouble looms ahead. With only a few days left on our visas, we must get through some tricky Russian checkpoints to get to Azerbaijan. With only a few days left on our visas, we're pushing to get out of Russia. I'm trying to figure out a route for us, but Dad's really frustrating me. Eh ben, quand je travaille toujours, et surtout nuit, eh ben, papa il est pas content. Je ne sais pas ce que je dois faire, si je dois écouter ce que papa m'apprend, ou ce que je dois écouter ce que papa me dit le jour le jour. Je suis content, j'étais très content quand tu as trouvé un plan même, même plusieurs. Et c'est bon. Tu as dit voilà, on fait comme ça. Non, c'est pas bon parce plus. que si, c'est pas bon du tout. Mais je, ce que je dis, il ne faut pas que ça t'empêche, ça, de regarder l'extérieur, de découvrir. Et demain, tu dois écrire des choses. Tu pourrais décrire le, le paysage dans lequel on a traversé Bah, si je regarde, oui. Voilà. Bah, il faut que tu regardes. Hein. Mais de façon, que tu dois écrire. Si je regarde, j'ai regardé, mais je pensais quand même. Alors, il faut pas qu'un arbre empêche l'autre. Ben, je peux faire les deux en même temps. Absolument. Ah voilà, ben, c'est ce que je fais moi. Dad and his lessons is always trying to teach me something.
Dad's great at expressing his opinions, but I sometimes wish he was a better listener. Je vais faire plus attention, ça c'est bien comme ça que tu veux. Ah. Je me suis rendu compte. Ça va dormir, c'est la belle. We have been living in a tight space for so long on this train. It's difficult not to get on each other's nerves. Yet, we have also developed a new kind of closeness. This journey has made us true companions, not just father and son. <laughs> An apple a day, keep talking about life. Feeling a little homesick, I give Grandma Mina a call. Ça va, on est toujours dans le train et on arrive d'ici quelques heures. Et ça va, tu es content Ah oui, très, très content. Très content. Très content. Là, on est à un très beau coucher de soleil et on regarde un village du train. Et ça fait 50 heures, 50 heures qu'on est dans le train. In Astrakhan, we get to stretch our legs and visit a Russian Orthodox church. Though it's being restored, it's still calm here. I love visiting all these spiritual places we found along the way. Faith is a very big part of my life. We're worried about what lies ahead. We're in a part of Russia now that is close to Chechnya. And because of the political turmoil here, security is tight. Twenty or so armed police, dogs, board a train. They take our passport and separate us. They question me while Delazad is left alone on the platform. The sun beats down. Hundreds of eyes stare at me from the train. For hours I stand there not knowing what's going on inside. Whatever their suspicions, I finally convince them to let us go, though they kick us off the train. After all my planning, we're forced to change our route to one that takes us well away from Chechnya. Fresh from the scare of the arrest, we fall into the welcome arms of old friends. Baku is like a second home. I've been coming since I was two. We have family and lots of friends here. I tell them how great Delazad was when the police stopped us. He held his own. He was fearless. 
With all that we've been through so far, we have plenty of stories to tell when the local TV station interviews us about our trip. A few more visits with friends, and we continue on. From Baku, we fly deeper into Azerbaijan on our way to Istanbul. In Nakhichevan, we tour an open-air museum filled with statues and monuments, including the remains of a 12th-century mausoleum for a king and his beloved wife. Azerbaijan is so different from China, Mongolia, or even Russia. It's kind of like how I picture Iran. I wish more than anything I could see Iran for myself. Our drive into Turkey takes us along its border, and I want the driver to keep going, to take Dad back home. It has been almost three decades since I last saw my homeland. I had to live so quickly. I didn't realize at the time I might never go back. For an exile, grief never leaves you and the joys of the present are always full of memories of the past. With Iran at our backs, we cross into Turkey and uh, fly to Istanbul. At the heart of the city is the Grand Bazaar. Like the caravanserai of the old Silk Road, all the languages, cultures, and religions of the world come together here. It's a mix of East and West, kind of like me. The legendary photographer Ara Güler. People call him the Eye of Istanbul. Although he has done portraits of many famous people, Ara is really known for his images of old Istanbul, its people and architecture. I take Delazat into Ara's studio. Ara trained his eye in Istanbul, and then he turned it outward. He does not believe that photography should be art. It should be a record of living history. As he says of photographers, we are the eyes of the world.
of all Ara's photographs. For me, this is the most powerful. I'm starting to realize that I'm like Ara and Dad. I'm not someone who can stand passively on the sidelines. Here at the edge of the Bosphorus, this dividing line between East and West, where I've come from and where I'm going, is becoming more and more clear to me. But with only a few days left, the journey is far from over. We still have to make a mad dash across an entire continent. Racing across Europe towards Paris, we've only got a handful of trains left. It's a good time to look back at how far we've come. Bon. Le premier voyage, la première route, les premières découvertes, les premiers pays que l'on avons traversé ensemble avec mon papa sont font partie du voyage Paris-Pékin. Ne pensez pas que ce voyage a commencé à Pékin, mais bien avant, sur les petits cafés au bord d'autoroute, où je me souviens, je commençais vraiment à penser à ce voyage, et où sur une feuille que j'ai sûrement perdue, j'écrivais les villes où l'on pouvait passer. Quand J'avais 10 ans, donc c'était il y a 5 ans. Ce voyage, il est parti comment Mon père, photoreporter, sur les routes d'Orient, d'Occident, de Chine et de Madère. Je le vis partir par ces engins volants tous les jours, tous les mois, toutes les semaines. <rire> Coupé en me voyant pleurant en me voyant courant vers l'avion pour lui dire « Emmène-moi, emmène-moi <rire> » sur les routes d'Orient et d'Occident, de Chine à Madère. And he did take me. My head is full with what I've seen. Part of me wants to keep going. The other part is ready for home. Ah ouais, je suis très content là, petit à petit, on s'avance vers Paris. Je suis un peu, je suis content aussi de rentrer. At the beginning of the trip, on the plane to China, Azad leans his head on my shoulder and reached for my hand as he fell asleep. I didn't move for two hours while holding his hand in mine. This moment was simple happiness. Since then, I've learned a lot about Azad, and it's made me proud of him. I was tough on him, and I gave him a lot of responsibility, because to do well in this world, he'll need to be strong. Quelque part en Hongrie. Dans le train, 
part en haut. Et euh, quel est notre plan Trouver un moyen pour rejoindre une ville qui rejoindra Paris. We're in a hurry, trying to get back in time for the start of school. How many trains have we nearly missed? Dad always has to get that one last photograph. But once we board, life slows down, and I meet one of the most incredible people, Louis Gallet, a World War II veteran whose life reads like an adventure story. Et puis ils nous attaquaient, ils nous tiraient dessus depuis là. Puis on a voulu, avec la bazooka, la, la faire sauter. Mais chaque fois que le, le tireur il se présentait pour tirer, pouf, il se met de balle en pleine tête. Mes quatre copains ont été morts pareil à mes pieds. Comme ça, tu as une balle dans la tête. Puis alors c'est un autre groupe qui a passé par derrière. Euh, puis qui les ont attaqués à la grenade à l'intérieur. Et voilà. Là, ça fait drôle de se trouver dans un train en Allemagne. Ouais. <laughs> As we talk, I discover that after the war, Louis went on to a life in politics. Faire de la politique, soit si tu veux faire une politique. Malheureusement, je crois que c'est le cas de tout le monde, que ce soit l'être humain ou les empires ou le gouvernement. Quand ils deviennent forts, ils perdent un peu leurs âmes mais... et... Ah, non Oui, 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 moi. I'm fascinated by what Louis knows. C'est par les voyages qu'on apprend tout. C'est par les voyages qu'on apprend tout, c'est vrai. Ouais. C'est vrai Par ouais. 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 les voyages, on apprend tout. Ouais. Tout, tout. On voit là comment les personnes, les pays... Il n'y a, a pas un pays qui est le même, hein? Ouais. hein? Moi, je me souviens, euh, mon père, il me disait toujours, si tu as un ami et tu veux le connaître, pars en voyage avec lui. Ouais. Même un jour, comme ça, tu connais ouais. ouais. Au lieu ah, de oui. passer des années dans un lieu, dans un jour de voyage, tu commences à connaître la personnalité. Ah oui, oui. Dad and I learned so much about each other's views in the past two months. We've discussed history and politics. It was back in Mongolia that I tried to explain to Dad why I want to be a politician. On va dire que les politiciens, ils ont un poids qui fait, surtout quand on est président ou, grand, ou ministre d'un grand État, et enfin, on va dire, quand je dis grand État, c'est des États qui ont un poids un sur les décisions internationales, et ben, tu peux faire changer la face du monde. Tu... Moi, mon rêve, à moi, c'est de changer l'Iran. Et après, en... non, non, j'explique. Après, en changeant l'Iran, et il faut qu'il y ait une possibilité de réentente entre l'Amérique et le Moyen-Orient, mais qu'il ne soit pas une entente euh, comme aujourd'hui euh, avec des guerres en Irak, mais une entente fraternelle et amicale qui fasse qu'on puisse créer du lien en même temps financier, politique et culturel.
When I go into politics, I want to have an impact, just like Barack Obama. Oh, how much I see of myself in him. I was the same age when I found my way in the world. It's wonderful to see his passion. And before this trip is over, I want him to understand mine. I have told him the stories of my past, but I have kept the best ones for last. Munich, Strasbourg, Paris, Gare de la quelle gare? L'Est, je pense. Gare de l'Est, coiffeur, Deveria. C'est ça, oui. Paraît-il, il y a un plan. Ça dépend quel coiffeur. Moi Ah oh non, alors là, je ne coupe même pas les cheveux. <rire> Dad and I have been battling over my hair since we were in China. He thinks he's wearing me down, but I'm staying strong. La main de la défaite. La main droite, c'est blanc. Et c'est les derniers moments de blanc que tu vas passer dans ta vie. C'est la guerre psychologique, ça commence. Oh, quel, quel malheur. Un coup qui me fait souffrir. Réfléchissons, réfléchissons. Alors là, si vous arrivez à réfléchir, s'il vous plaît, une fois par an. Et, et ben, c'est le moment dans l'année que je réfléchis, malheureusement. C'est bizarre parce que je sens que votre guerre psychologique ne tient que sur quelques idées. Donc. Mais ça marche. Non, ça ne marche pas vraiment. Oh, oh, quel malheur. Ever since our 53-hour train ride across Russia, we've played chess day after day. <laughs> this game has marked the days of our journey like it has marked all of my life. I have played since I was a child back in Iran. Chess helped me during the time I spent in prison in Iran under the Shah. I made a set out of breadcrumbs and dirt and played against myself over and over and over again. And later, it was chess that introduced me to the young Masood, the rebel chief of Afghanistan. When I offered to play a game, he asked, do you take yourself to be an adversary? I laughed and quoted the Persian poet Ferdowsi, come to the field of battle and the sun will rise on the victor. It was the start of a 16-year friendship that ended when Masood was assassinated. He was killed by suspected Al-Qaeda agents 
two days ahead of the 9-11 attacks. Masood's profound and quiet courage inspired me as have many of the photographers, artists, and activists I have come to know. It's been incredible to meet some of the people who have had such an impact on Dad. It's their faces, and the faces of all the people that I've met on this trip, that will always stay with me. Pendant tout le voyage, je l'ai jamais oublié. Et on va dire les 99% des voyages. There's still time for Dad to give me one more lesson. We are cleaning up for Rachel. Her nomads are coming home. Rachel, Monamu, my anchor, always my anchor, the voice that calls me home. Strasbourg et Paris. Alors, ça fait quoi euh, Tout pays de mon enfance. Oh, oh, oh. Ah non, je suis content. Quand même, je suis content. Encore bas, euh, comme les papillons. Dans les cieux. <rire> à l'approche de la lumière. Génial. Voilà. Vous êtes sur le pont. Quel pont Bon. Vous allez peut-être pas nous reconnaître, hein. on est crade, sale, on ouais, pue. Euh... Ouais, là, moi, je me suis lavé les dents, je me suis rasé. Ouais. Euh... Ah, Il que... n'y a que Alors, pas. Je me suis lavé les dents au bout de deux mois que je... <rire> Il, raconte pas... Il raconte des bêtises, papa. C'est faux. Non, 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 non c'est pas vrai. Non, 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 c'est faux, c'est faux, c'est faux. Je me lavais au moins une fois tous les deux jours quand je pouvais. Ouais, Paris. Non, il faut personne. Tu vois, toi After so many train rides, we pull into a station for the last time.
Back home, everything seems the same. But for me, so much has changed. After sharing this incredible experience, my father is more than just my father. He's now my friend. And I'm more than just Delizad, son of Reza, the photographer. I am my own person now. I have confidence in myself. I can't wait for the next adventure to begin.